I'm Larry Gray. I designed the Pitarak in the early 80s and refined the boat over years. It's been thoroughly tested in many wild conditions. It has the ability to handle almost any condition you're game enough to challenge. I knew if I designed it right, it would be suitable for beginners and for serious expeditioners all over the world. The keel line delivers powerful bracing ability. The sides of the hull are designed to broach with confidence when leaning into a wave. We're on a journey with a team of five pitarakas traveling through remote Papua New Guinea. The kayaks are fully laden and totally prepared for a 2,000 kilometer journey. It's not always possible to land in some areas. You need to be confident in your decisions. The double is great in tricky conditions. Like the single, both boats love the extremes. Tracking is a vital feature of a worthy sea kayak. It's the ability to hold a line in wind and moving water. I worked on the keel line for months to find an average for most conditions. Pitarak first introduced this style of rudder in the mid-80s. But it took away its go-anywhere ability. A good sea kayak should handle all conditions with or without a rudder. We designed a quick release system to the retractable rudder design. It meant that the kayak could pivot with the rudder up or land and launch anywhere, even full of gear, or discard of the rudder totally in less than 20 seconds. One of the things I like about the double is its maneuverability. Its length and seating position was determined by the ability to easily reach to either end of the kayak with the paddle. At speed, the raised nose acts like a foil, and because the boat's width isn't excessive, it means you can lay the boat over and handle good-sized waves on your beam. The single works well with or without a rudder. Its length is the same as the wild weather kayaks of the Arctic. It has many active surfaces. It bow steers extremely well, while the gunnel shape is designed to raise the keel from the water when leant over to pivot the boat on the spot. The triangulation of the Pitarak makes it the strongest design around. The slender nose shape came from the Aleutians. It parts chop, reducing the wave's energy, but not too buoyant as to throw the nose airborne. This is important to keep the keel in the water, and why the Pitarak sits so well in rough weather. Pacific Island canoes are similar, while the English still needed a spot of catching up. And this is the Iron Duke, a 40-gallon drum with outrigger and two sawn-off skis instead of a keel. She was designed for the solitary canoeist so that he could paddle up to an ice floe and hop out pulling his craft behind him and paddle off again. Pitarax are a high-performance sea kayak and are made out of fiberglass. Pitarax are chosen for expeditions all over the world. Fiberglass slices through water like nothing else and it allows the owner to customise their own boat. The scrapes to this eight-year-old hull are evident but hardly affect its performance. Fiberglass scrapes are always clean and repairable. It doesn't create hull fluff, the fine hairs on the hull which really slow a kayak down. Plastic can't be repaired easily, and in a lot of cases it's impossible. Fiberglass grazers tend to smooth themselves out over time, leaving little resistance in the water. Plastic is very durable, but still has lots of problems. Hull sag never occurs with fiberglass. This is stage one at the Pitarak factory. The moulds are being prepared for another boat. A shiny mould means a shiny kayak. The choice of colour is then sprayed evenly throughout the mould. We're looking at the kayak now from inside out. Each Pitarak is built to the same standards as the ones used on expeditions all over the world.
They are built to the highest standard possible. We use the very latest in materials and technology to produce a quality product. The hulls are ribbed at three stress points. When properly cured, the mould gives birth magically to another kayak. Boat number two for the first ever sea kayak expedition to Antarctica. This is the second stage where fit out and detailing takes place. Deck lines are UV marine grade nylon. The double pitter rack has a removable sock in the day hatch. This makes it easier to access smaller essentials such as sunscreen, sunglasses or camera. The lid screws down to a watertight seal. As with all pitteracks, the double is carefully assembled by hand and quality checked throughout each stage. It has a long list of features including dual bilge pumps. The double has a track record ranging from simple day trips to wild expeditions anywhere in the world. Pitterack is Australia's most travelled sea kayak. The knowledge gathered from each expedition goes into every boat we make. Even a simple carry handle could be critical to the completion of an expedition. Camping equipment is kept dry and safe inside the large storage compartments and both rear hatches can be accessed easily at sea. All hatches to the compartments are triple sealed. The large rear hatch lid is locked in place by depressing the outer edge into a rebate. And like the front, both are totally watertight. When properly in place, they are so secure that they can't be removed by impact or any other means, but they are designed to release easily only at each end. A really fun bit of the morning, hey? The raised foil at the rear of the hatch deflects water impact when traveling in a following sea. This raised edge also allows for easy access to your gear inside. When you're at the ends of the earth, you can only rely on your skill and the equipment you choose. The rudder sock at the tail of the kayak is sacrificial. It's designed to give way on serious impact instead of the kayak. The entire rudder assembly can be removed for rudderless kayaking, leaving no impression to the Pitterax lines. The hand pump is positioned for easy use. It's the most reliable way to remove water from a kayak. It's far more reliable than electric systems. It can be operated sitting in or on top of the kayak. It pumps twice the volume rate of a foot pump. Even in wild conditions like the surf, it can easily be operated. And it can be accessed, if in a rescue situation, by other kayakers. But more important than any secondary bailing system will always be the simple and reliable roll. The Pitterack is a sea kayak that the complete beginner can rely on, knowing that experts all over the world put their lives and trust in the seat of this kayak. Well, we've had a bit of an epic today. We had this 10 mile crossing to do and we got two thirds of the way across, three quarters, and it was great, and then it bogged in. Fog came down heavy on us. And, um, we paddled across to where we sort of more or less knew and we saw some land so we sort of aimed for that instead of going exactly with the compass. And we then decided to paddle around and around in circles after that for a while um, in more or less a whiteout. Realised that we weren't in the spot that we were in 
and had to then paddle back into the wind for uh, a couple of hours, two or three hours, to get out of there. Um, we then came round to where there was a refugio marked and um, we couldn't get to the shore because of the ice. Um, so we then had to paddle all the way down this long thing called Canal Peltier. And so we were heading down and we got to within 50 metres of the last corner and the ice closed in. So we tried dragging back up because we were getting crushed there in our boats with the bloody ice around us, you know, crushing us. So we jumped out of our boats and tried dragging them up the side um, and the ice just closed in completely. You can see all the way behind me the um, ice is all the way back up the canal. So it was just a matter of, um, it was either sleep on an ice flow or um, drag it up the side of the hill here. So we've dragged our gear up the side of the hill. The boats are parked on the top of the rocks down there. And that's a bit nerve-wracking. Um, but hopefully we'll sleep well despite that.